will celebrate that in our liturgy today. I will say more at the peace. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. First lesson is from the Revelation of John, chapter 7. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. 
and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the, th of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Let's read together a portion of Psalm 34 found in your bulletin insert responsively by half verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. Taste and see what the Lord is good. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it, it, it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will, will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people are bowing and persecuting you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, child of God. Today we celebrate All Saints Sunday. This Sunday is one of the seven principal feasts of our church. All Saints Sunday is a time where we reflect and we remember on all those who were witnesses to the faith, showed the faith in their lives, and were an example of Christian life. Yes, they can be the well-known saints, those who died as martyrs to the faith, the apostles, Saint Anna Alexander, to name just a few, or... They can be those that you have known in your life, those who have made an impression on you or helped mold you. These people were witnesses to the Christian life and also saints. Our readings today are rich with witnessing to the gospel of Christ, and really isn't that what a saint is. In our reading from Matthew, Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes in verses 3 through 6, focus on those who have suffered. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And let's just pause this just a minute and understand that blessed in translations can also mean happy or satisfied. So we can look at the Beatitudes in a new meaning And we might say, satisfied are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Happy are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Satisfied are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And then, in verses 7 through 11, Jesus does something. He changes the focus from those who suffer to those who would lead a life of discipleship, reversing the expectations of the world. Happy are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Happy are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. 
I have been fortunate to know many saints in my life. My grandmother was a saint. She took my sister and I into her home and loved us and raised us, made sure we had a good religious foundation and never complained and did everything out of love. I have worked with saints at the Department of Family and Children's Services who showed selfless love to God, selfless love of God to the CPS children they served. And let me tell you about Miss Annie. She's one of my patients at the nursing home that I see as a hospice visitor. She recently passed away, but she was filled with God's Holy Spirit. She was small in stature, and while her body was failing, her mind was sharp and strong. On one of my first visits with her, she asked me if I was a man of God and did I preach. And I told her that I did. I was a man of God and I did preach. Well, her face just lit up. And she said, I knew it. I knew it. She asked me, she said, come closer, come closer. And she took both of my hands in her small hands. And she began, began to pray for me and my ministry vigorously calling the name of God several times to make sure he was listening. And her hands were just shaking like this, you know. Had a big smile on her face. I'm sure you could hear her praying all the way down the hall. I was moved. I had no words except thank you. And each time I visited her, it was like she had seen me for the first time. She would ask me how, th how I was doing, how things were going, and then she blessed me. She was a saint to me and to many others. So, who are your saints? Those who may walk among us or those who are now with God? Today, we reflect on them. At the time, All Saints Day is a day also for those of us still living, you and me. This is a day that we as Christians celebrate our sainthood with all the saints here and now and in every place and across all time. We Christians are the holy ones, usually translated the saints. And we may not think of ourselves as saints because we may say that a saint is one who has died or I don't feel like a, I'm a saint because I'm not good enough. But Christians who follow Christ and witness through words and actions in this world are saints. And today is our celebration too. And if that hasn't blown your mind enough, you and I are also a child of God. Yes, our reading from 1 John says, What love the Father has for us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. We are God's children, and we are saints. When we take the words of Christ and witness to the world through words and actions, saints follow a path from the Beatitudes by showing mercy to others in our lives, and mercy can take many forms. Mercy is defined as the compassionate treatment of those in distress, especially when it is within one's power to punish or harm them. In the Old Testament, mercy is kindness or loving kindness. So when we go out of our way to help someone who needs it, or we feed someone who is hungry, or visit someone who needs a visit, or many, many other things that we do, we are showing loving kindness because it is in our power to turn aside and do nothing. By showing mercy, we shall receive mercy. The Beatitudes ask us to be people of peace and bring peace to those we encounter that need 
God's peace. And to be pure in heart, pure in that our life's desires to be with God, and that should be what we are about. By being steadfast as Christians in our lives, even though that is not what the world wants, the world may revile us, and even in some places persecute us because we follow Christ. What Christ wishes for us is not what the world wants for us. On All Saints Day, we are invited to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And sometimes the path can be difficult but often it is a loving path to others where it's not what we do for God, but what God does through us. Not what we do for God, but what God does through us. I may visit someone in the nursing home, and when I leave, I think, well, that was a pretty good visit. But to the person I visited, it may have meant more than I know. It may have cheered them up. It may have made their day wonderful. Now, I did not know that. God took what I did and made it so much more. Even a friendly hello and a conversation can have much more impact on someone and brighten their spirits in ways we could not understand. God did that. And he worked through us to make it happen. That is the glory of God. And we are witnesses of our faith to others as children of God. I hope by the grace of God I reach heaven one day and I can see those saints who have helped me and those that I have loved. And I hope Miss Annie is standing there with them so I can give her a big hug. And all the children of God said, Amen. Saints of God, before let us stand and renew our baptismal covenant found on page 416. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. You proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us pray. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, Bestow upon us the forgiveness of sins and keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, so our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Please be seated. Again, good morning. Happy All Saints Sunday. Just invite you, if you're visiting with us, I welcome you this morning and invite you to coffee hour immediately after the service. One of the cool things, since we have the United Methodist in, our con in the uh, parish hall on Sunday mornings, we've gotten to learn a lot about each other's polity, that is, the way our churches work. And the other day, Leanne and I were having a conversation about deacons in the Methodist Church and deacons in the Episcopal Church, and I said, you know, our deacons are non-stipendary. That means they don't get paid. And she goes, my God, Scott's a saint. So, Scott, <laughs> thank you for all that you do here in this place in the many years you have served. I think it's... So on this All Saints Sunday, we do have a couple of variations in the liturgy. Um, you will see in the leaflet we have listed those who have, have died, um, the saints in our lives, as Scott mentioned. And there was no prayers, if you noticed. We just went straight from the baptismal covenant to the con confession. Um, the prayers are in Eucharistic Prayer D today. So at the table, um, we will offer some prayers. So you'll want to pay attention for those of you who come week in and week out. It's Prayer D, not Prayer A. So use the prayer book this morning. Um, and the responses might be a little different. And I will say those names of those who have died um, in the context of that Eucharistic prayer. And I will invite you, there are names that are not written on that sheet that maybe you should have sent an email to the church that are near and dear to your heart. And so I'll say, are there others in that context? And it's okay to offer those names popcorn style, as I like to say. We will also, at, after the end of as the Eucharist concludes, we will have a different post-communion prayer, so I'll direct your attention to that. And then because we never really let go of those saints in our lives, um, we always, as we go, th particularly as we go through holiday seasons, for me at least, those who have loved and lost, we have to commend them to God continually. So we will do the commendation, which is something we would do at a funeral. Um, and notice the beautiful last lines that even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. It's a powerful witness to the resurrection and to the to the to, to all saints. So we will do that to conclude the service. A couple of announcements about this week. Um, Wednesday we will continue to have Holy Eucharist in here. Um, Nita's class will be canceled this week. So if you come to Wednesday night with Nita's class, know that is canceled. If you check in your newsletter, and by the way, if you don't get the newsletter, there's an email address on the back of your leaflet. You can just send that email to Julianne and just say, hey, Julianne, add me to the sheet, and you'll get one every Friday. On Wednesdays in Advent, I'll be doing a class in here. There'll be some other classes. There's also in the newsletter a ton of outreach opportunities coming up. I want to thank those who were at Good Shepherd last week, Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, for dinner. Um, we'll be doing that again in November, so we're looking for volunteers on November the 26th for that outreach opportunity as well. Finally, this is stewardship season. We had a wonderful ministry moment last week. Thank you, Danielle. And we will have another one today from Nate Keith. So I invite Nate to the lectern.
Good morning. When I look out, I, I, I get reminded of a graduation I spoke to about 20 years ago, and there are 3,000 people there, and this seems like there's 3,000 here that, these days. And uh, it was so scary when you have Muhammad Ali sitting in the front row and his children, one of his children are graduating, you kind of get a little anxious. Anyway, I'd like to share a story with you that helps explain my personal relationship to St. Thomas, as well as my desire to support St. Thomas. The family of St. Thomas has been so good to me during a very difficult time in my life, and I can't be more appreciative of your caring. When I look back, I've had many interesting experiences in my life. However, a few stand out and have a great deal of meaning to me. When I moved to Thomasville in 2012, I had just retired from my work as a professor of mathematics and felt that most of my important activities were in the rearview mirror. Prior to that, though, in 2010, I spent much of my time doing something much more important to me than being a professor. And I was taking care of my wife of 38 years, Adrian Arnold Keith. She was baptized, grew up in this church, and I always felt at home here when we visited over the years. Her funeral was here at St. Thomas at the end of 2010. In 2018, with God's help, I was able to help my mother-in-law, Margaret Pittman Arnold, as she seemed, as she neared the end of her life on earth. She loved St. Thomas, was baptized, married, and died here after 100 years and 10 days, always loyally supporting St. Thomas. On May 31st of this year, I lost my wife of 11 years, Reverend Judith Jones Keith, priest emeritus of St. Thomas. During those years, what was most important to me was to love and care for her as she fought her battle with cancer for more than eight years. She loved the members of St. Thomas, her work here, and work with many others in the, the community here in Thomasville. Adrian, then Margaret, then Judy, all with this wonderful connection to St. Thomas, had made my life richer in so many ways. In church on Sundays, they're always close to me, and I'm at peace here with their memories. Each Sunday that I'm here, I'm reminded of them and that St. Thomas is so, is so important in, my, in our lives. For a few minutes each Sunday, I am truly at peace here. I'm thankful for St. Thank, for Thomas being in my life. Thank you for listening. Nate, thank you for your words. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us in offering and sacrifice to the Most High.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify You, Father, and to give You thanks. For You alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, You made all things and filled them with Your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of Your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. disobedience took us far from you. You did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, He lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor He proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose He gave Himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for Him who died, and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, His own first gift for those who believe, to complete His work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Him to be glorified by you, His Heavenly Father, having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. At supper with them, He took bread, and when He given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them, and showing them to be holy gifts for your people, holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Frank, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those in the Middle East. Remember those on our prayer list. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, particularly Al, Betty, Connie, Jim, David, Charles, Marion, Isabel, Jimmy, Nancy, James, Chuck, Jonathan, Peter, Ginger, Barbara, Donna, Linda, Louise, Buddy, Woody, Margaret, David, Lanny, Laura, Russ, Jane, Rosemary, Annalisa, Carl Akay, Judith, Jan, Randall, Richard, Frederick, Virginia, McCurley, Jim, Paige, Isabel, Tom, Andy, Osvaldo, Tita, Dottie, Eloise, Arthur, Melanie, Dorsey, Benjamin, Joanna, David, Martin, Barbara, Buffy, Charlie, Julie, Chip, William, Mercer, John, Natalie, Roy, Eleanor. Are there others? Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of your eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, with St. Thomas and all your saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power.
Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 498. 498. Let us join in the post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with spiritual food and drink, the body and blood of the Son of Jesus Christ, and have given us the foretaste of your heavenly name. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction and a pledge of our inheritance, and that in the kingdom we bear to the death, not in sorrow nor crying, but in the fullness of joy of all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. Page 499. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints. You only are mortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth. And to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest to Christ, to your servants, to your saints, for sorrow and pain. Into your hands, O most merciful Savior, we commend your servants, who we name today. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flock, and sinners of your own redeeming. Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Now may, the, peace, now may God, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thank you.